Hi, this is Prophetess Lanine Hanaya, and I'd like to welcome you to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast, where I give you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, I thank you for tuning in today, and today I'm going to be picking up where I left off on my series on Incubus and Succubus sex demons of the night. On the first segment of this, we talked about, I, I laid a little ground information about incubus and succubus, gave the definition, um, gave you the, the admonishment not to pay too much attention to those names and just to remind you that they are very powerful spirits of sexual lust. And I opened up that segment with a comment from my blog and I'd like to do that again today and maybe for all of these segments because these stories are real and it's because of these stories that I'm even doing these this webcast so this story this is uh, Gizmo this is a letter from Gizmo and she posted this on my insights from Dr. Intimacy a WordPress blog which you can find at Dr. Intimacy dot wordpress dot com and if you can't remember that you can always find all of my websites and email addresses and any way to contact me on my website dr intimacy dot com that's d r i n t i m a c y dot com and it will link you into all of my other sites but on my uh, insights from dr intimacy blog i have a dedicated page to incubus and succubus and so this is a letter from that page. This is from Gizmo. I am a 26-year-old woman, and I was molested from the ages of 10 to 12 years old. I kind of liked it at the time because I was young, fat, and ugly when it was happening to me. I did not know at the time he was molesting me. He made me feel good, and I thought I was lucky. I did not understand what was going on. Years went by, and I am now married with two kids. Ever since I married my husband, I've been feeling like something is having sex with me at night when I am asleep. The feeling feels so good and so strong that it blows my mind. Now when I have sex with my husband, it does not feel good. It used to, but now I don't care. I want to have sex with my husband. I look every night for whatever it is that is having sex with me. I even go and take naps all through the day, hoping and looking for it. This is causing a lot of hell with me and my husband. I no longer want my husband, and my husband is all mad and upset because he can't please me in the bedroom anymore. I try to change, but it's so hard because my body wants and craves that thing that makes love to me at night. I'm so messed up, and I do love my husband. I really, really do. What can I do to end this madness? Please, please help me. What am I to do? And again, that letter was from Gizmo from my Insights from Dr. Intimacy blog. And letters like that is why I want to do this series. I know a lot of people don't believe in these occurrences, but for the people that are experiencing it, it is all too real. And so I want to pick up where I left off. We, we left off talking about whether or not there is validity to the fact that these spirits even exist. And I read to you Genesis chapter uh, 6, verse 1. And it said, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And we talked about how spirits are able to take on some type of physical body. So we've got the proof that they exist. Um, whether or not you accept that is up to you, but there is at least some scriptural validity to it. So how do you know if you, you're being attacked by these spirits? Well, whether or not you're being attacked by these spirits is usually pretty obvious because they tend to manifest themselves to your conscious mind. That means that whoever is being attacked by incubus spirits can literally see them, they can feel them, they can smell them. It is a very real experience as if being in the room with a human being. And so you usually can tell. And, and I keep looking down and I just want to let you know that 
of getting uh, a lot of this information. I compiled all of my years of research on this topic into a very extensive chapter in my latest book, book which is called The Spirits of Sexual Perversion uh, Reference Book. And you can find this on my website, drintimacy.com. But I have a, a dedicated chapter to Incubus and Succubus in the book. And if I keep glancing down, that's what I'm looking at, looking at the scriptures and the notes that I have in here. Um, but they manifest themselves to your conscious mind and cause you to experience all of the stimulation and physical feelings that take place during intercourse or sexual contact with a physical person. So that's the most obvious manifestation of them. Um, now, it's not always as obvious because not everybody sees an actual physical person or actually sees the spirit. Some people just feel the spirit as in as Gizmo just explained. So what do they do? What do they do? Well, these demons, most of the time they reveal themselves at night, but they can actually reveal themselves to you at any time during the day. These attacks can happen at any time. They just happen to be most common at night. Um, what they do is, let's see, many people claim to actually see spirit bodies that come and subject them to various sexual acts. These spirits are often violent and will attack you, beating, choking, and restraining you. They may even disturb things in your home and break things. Think of them as you would an extremely abusive sex partner or rapist. Um, and I I, this was very personal for me as well because my my mom, my dear mom, and who was also a, a a ordained minister of the gospel, God bless her, Gail Wilson. Uh, you can find her online as well. But uh, she was attacked by these spirits from when she was a little girl, and I can remember times, you know, my mom waking up in the morning looking as pale as a ghost because she had been choked or beaten throughout the night by one of these spirits and I couldn't understand that because it had never affected me that way with that type of manifestation but as I got older and I got more involved in different types of sexual perversion I did have those type of encounters I remember a particular occasion uh, after performing phone sex with a guy that I was engaged to at that time and this was this was when I was a born again believer. I was already a Christian at that time, going to church. Obviously, had a lot of growing to do, but I was already a part of the body of Christ. And we were engaged, and I had phone sex with him, and I was feeling very convicted and guilty afterward. And afterward, um, something literally picked my bed up off the floor, and and uh, turned it sideways. And then dropped it back down and my body flopped on the bed. I was not drinking. I had no alcohol in my system. I had no drugs in my system, prescription or otherwise. I was not tired. It was 8 o'clock in the evening. I wasn't sleeping. This was an experience that I actually had. And so these, these spirits, um, they are oftentimes very violent. Um, they will choke, they will beat, they will rape, but not always. Sometimes they just give the sexual experience, and sometimes it's something that you just feel, and you don't even see them. On that particular evening, I did not see the, the spirit that moved my bed. I just, I just experienced myself moving with the bed when that bed was picked up and slammed down. And it wasn't lifted just an inch off the floor. I mean, it was picked up until the bed was almost turned over. And I did not see that spirit, but there was another occasion uh, after an act of uh, fornication. Um, this was actually a, a, a really devastating situation that had happened for me, which you can also read about on my blog in an article called uh, Setting the Captives Free from Friendship to Fornication. And this was an occasion where the assistant pastor of my church befriended me. I was very young in the Lord at that time. As a matter of fact, at that particular time, I was a backslider and he befriended me uh, only to take advantage of me sexually. And he was married. And so after he left my home, after we engaged in fornication, after he left my home, I was laying on the bed crying and, of course, feeling very guilty. And I actually saw, literally saw a spirit 
walk into my bedroom and walked from outside into the bedroom, reaching into my chest, and my heart stopped beating, and I stopped breathing. Uh, and I heard a voice from heaven say, stop, and the spirit dissipated. So that was an occasion where I actually saw the demon. So I'm just giving you a few experiences. There are many, many more. People have many more uh, extensive experiences than that. But these are some of the ways that you'll know that incubi spirits are afflicting you. Uh, what else do they do? So we talked about the violence. We talked about them restraining you. Uh, they also cause overwhelming sexual urges in the body. These urges are so strong that they completely take over your mind uh, to the extent that you may even feel insane or tormented even. When you get these kind of urges, nothing makes them go away. Taking a cold shower, shifting positions, trying to distract yourself with some activity. These urges are very powerful and um, they are all consuming. Now, I just want to say before anybody jumps to, jumps to the conclusion that I'm saying every sexual urge is demonic. That is not at all what I'm saying. There are sexual urges that happen in the body purely due to uh, an increase in hormones. Women are more sexually aroused around their cycle. Young men that begin going through puberty, they get sexually aroused and spontaneous erections. And I'm not saying that all sexual arousal or strong sexual arousal is due to the influence of a sex demon. Um, as a matter of fact, when you have these type of urges that I'm talking about that are influenced by incubi spirit, they are not normal. Uh, when sexual urges come on suddenly without warning, at times that seem inappropriate or without any stimuli, and you simply cannot control them without having an intense tormenting, and I want to focus on that word, tormenting, because these spirits torment without having an intense tormenting battle or just giving in to sexual release. That is when you know they are demonic. These types of urges are not normal. It is normal and healthy even for us to experience sexual urges. We were designed that way. We were built that way. That is a good thing. When you cannot control those urges, when they literally mentally torment you to anguish, when they distract you, when they prevent you from being productive, when you're supposed to be working, maybe doing your homework or working or putting your hand to some other task, and you are so tormented by an urge that you have to stop what you're doing to relieve yourself, or you, you tell yourself that anyway, you don't have to, but that's how you feel, or you have to go to a, into a really intense battle to make it stop. These are not normal, normal urges that are due to just hormones. These are spiritual attacks, and they will manifest themselves in your physical body the same way uh, hormonal urges do. They are just exceedingly much stronger, and I will not say enough the word tormenting. They torment you because you usually don't want it to happen, um, and if you do want it, you feel guilty about it. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to be able to cover right now uh, for this segment. Actually, I want to say one more thing. They also cause, an, uh, this is a less obvious uh, manifestation of them, but they cause nightmares as well. And just like with sexual urges, not every nightmare is the result of an incubi attack. But incubi attacks are very realistic and impressionable experiences that will make a weighty impact to you emotionally and spiritually. They are experiences that deeply disturb, not something that you get up, brush off, and forget about. Okay, so these are heart-stopping, um, very realistic, wake you out of your sleep nightmares when they're caused by incubi. And we'll talk about that more <laughs> oh man, I thought my video had stopped, but we'll talk about that more on the next segment. Thanks again for joining me on this 
episode of the Insights from Dr. Intimacy webcast.